Hello pearls and welcome back to my channel. I tread lightly on today's subject because this is something that I am constantly um, in conversations with. I'm in conversations with women about a lot of things, but um, this is an ongoing situation. It's an ongoing subject that comes up quite a bit. Um, with women who are um, successful, they're tired of being alone, they're ready to share their life with someone, and they just keep either saying that um, their standards are too high, maybe their standards are too high, are their standards too high, I'm not taking my standards down for anybody, no one's meeting my standards. And I tread lightly on this subject because I really don't believe in standards being too high. I really, truly, honestly don't. Um, and the reason why I say that is because your standards are based on your life. Your standards are relative to you and where you are in your specific life, you as an individual. So my standards, I say that to say my standards may not be as high as yours, or you might think mine are too low or vice versa. And everyone will adjust their standards based on their own um, experiences. So that's really kind of what I want to get into. It's not so much about the standards being too high because I believe that everyone has standards and has a right to have standards and has a right to decipher what they want and they, what they do and do not want in their relationships. Um, but it's a growing concern because a lot of good women um, are alone. And many of them want to share their life with someone. They're ready to get married. They're ready to settle down. They're ready to have kids if they don't have kids. They're ready to co-parent if they already do have kids. They would like someone to, to lean on and someone to um, go through this thing called life with. And many times it all comes down to standards. It all comes down to what you know they want and what they're looking for. And I'm really big on triggers. You know that about me. I am really big on not so much the standard, but why is it a standard? Is it a standard? Is it an expectation? And sometimes what happens most of the time, actually, what happens is we base what we want and what we're looking for on hurts or disappointments in past relationships. OK, in our past experiences. And that's the key to identifying some of the reasons why you're alone and why you have trouble finding love and staying in a decent relationship with someone when you're dating, because they're hitting a trigger that's either making you end the relationship or when you start to talk to someone, it's like mm -mm, he doesn't have this, 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 this. And. I'm always about self evaluation and reassessing. And so what I implore you to do is take a look at, you know, your standards. Some of us have them subconsciously, some of them, some of us have them written down. And what we tend to do in life is we are so conditioned to have a reflex on, you know, well, I'm not going to do or I can't put up with it, but we don't just we don't really look into the why. And some of the things that you will not put up with are based on issues that took place when you were in your early 20s and teens. And when you really do sit down and look at your standards and your list and your expectations, some of us actually do have them written down. Some of them have some of us have them in a journal. When you really sit down and look at them, you'll sometimes discover that, wow, you know, um, that's not as important to me now in my 30s and what have you that it was back in my teenage relationship or when I was in high school and what have you. And so that's why I'm big on triggers. I'm big on identifying the why, the truth behind why this is something that bothers you or you won't put up with. Because a lot of times we just get so clouded by the, the, the fact that we don't look at the why. And sometimes that why is no longer even relevant anymore. Um, you know, and then we have to look at our realistic expectations of what we're looking for. You know, what is it realistic? Are you do you want Mr. Perfect? Because that's that's what's really hindering a lot of us from finding true love and finding a good man in our lives is because we're looking for this 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 idyllic uh, idyllic 
um, man. And it's, it's not being real. And it's almost a crutch like, well, he, you know, I'm looking for this. When you really honestly aren't looking for that. When you really truly are not looking for that at all. And you do subconsciously, well, consciously realize that that's not even real. That's not going to happen. That's not, you know, that's not possible. Um, no one's going to have everything. So you really have to sit down with your list and think, okay, and write down your top five, your top 10, your, you know, hard sells where this, they have to this, this, this but is it a realistic, they have to, um, you know, I've told many, many, many women, um, I was talking to someone not that long ago and, you know, I told her, I said, your typical physical type may not be your husband. I've actually experienced that in my dating life. The, my physical number one had to be, had to check all these boxes off were usually no good for me. No good for me at all. No good. Everybody has that 100% idea. I mean, I'll even share with my husband's permission. You know, um, my husband, when we first got together, my husband did like high yellow black women. He liked them short. Um, he liked them little on the, the little tiny side and what have you, which I was. And <laughs> at the time, you're talking about 15 years ago now. But my husband was a butt man. My husband loves a dunk. My husband will stop and, I mean... <laughs> If he's up on a magazine or something, one time he was like, damn. And I was like, excuse me, I'm standing right here. Um, I don't have a big dunk. I have a little cute bump, and that's what I got. But I was blessed at the top. And my husband actually turned into a breast man because of me. <laughs> and he loves my little bump. So, you know, but that did not stop him from, you know, seeing all of my other qualities. And, and you know, he, I mean, that wasn't going to stop him anyway, but... That's just one of my examples. Sometimes you have to figure, you have to take the blinders off of your list and your expectations and real and be realistic, you know, and, and kind of like give yourself a range. Um, you know, your needs, you know, your, your, what you, what you need and want are two different things. And your needs may not be wrapped in a bow with your physical wants all the way around your physical wants. And that's just one example. I mean, we're, I'm talking about the physical, but, you know, you have to shift a little bit because you have to give yourself a range. So what I what I really would like for you to do and what I'm advising you to do is sit down with your list. And just go over, OK, you know, what are my hard cells? What are my he has to have, for example? Does he have to have A plus credit or decent credit that you can work with and show him and help him, you know, because you might be the key and I'm getting off the subject a little bit, but you actually might be the key that's going to help bring him up to the level that you want him to be at. Okay. Does he have to be six foot four chocolate and blah, blah, blah. Um, or does he, you know, is it a range? Can he at least be five eleven? Would you be okay with five nine and, uh, you know, can he be five, nine to six foot, you know, um, can he be caramel, you know, or, or a little bit higher yellow complected, you know, because we all, we all have variations of things that turn our head. Okay. So you have to think about, okay, if your current list says definite, okay, well go back and revisit your list. Can he be at least this range? You know, do I kind of like, I mean, have I turned my head and looked at a little, you know, short thing and thought, okay, boo, you know, you have to open yourself to that. Um, you know, as going back to the things that are not physical, you know, does he have to have, you know, does, does he have to run a hedge fund and work for a Fortune 500 company or work on Wall Street? Or does he at least have to have a job that pays decent, you know? What are your levels of, okay, you know, this is my top desire, but, you know, um, does he have to be in a business suit? Does he have to work in corporate America? Or are you okay with blue collar? You know, as long as the checks are steady and, you know, he's not in crazy debt and so forth and so on. Does he have to have no kids? Or does he at least have to have, you know, X amount of kids? Does he have to at least take care of his kids? Does he have to have at least girls because you like to have boys or you already have, you know, you have to, there goes the range, you know, what are some of your, okay, they're not necessarily deal breakers because we have to come off of these 
That's what people say when they mean by these high standards. I really don't believe in high standards. I believe in unrealistic expectations. Okay, because when you broaden your expectations standards, you allow more to come into your life. And you open up the, the wider possibility of the one that could possibly be perfect for you. Because remember, I've said before, perfect for you may not be perfect for someone else. But you may be blocking your perfect man coming along and having a wonderful relationship because you aren't willing to compromise and come down and think about some realistic expectations. And I'm going to tell you right now, you will be surprised that some of these, the, the other range that's maybe down a little bit off that list, you know, um, so you'd be surprised if you're somebody who likes a short husky man, that tall dude might blow your mind in some ways, honey, you know, and vice versa, you know, um, you have to open up yourself to your variations. Okay. And you have to look at the potential of what's there to be worked with. And you have to sometimes take the blinders off because what happens is we are so, um, used to certain things and I'll go back to the crutches. We're so used to having those crutches on with, you know, that's our, you know, when I talk to females about this, well, they don't meet my expectations. Okay. Do you, when's the last time you even really assessed your expectations and what is it based on? You know, did you have a relationship with someone? You know, do you want them to have perfect credit and have a certain amount of money in the bank and, 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 you know, work at a fortune 500 company because you were in a relationship with a man where he bled your bank account dry. And every time you turned around, you was bailing him out of a financial situation. Do you, you know, um, and when you did, did something happen like that, that made you say, okay, you know what? Uh, uh, and when you start to actually go back over your tops of what you would like to have, because a lot of times it's what you like, would love to have. And why, why do you want it? And why have you come to this, this place in your life and, and put this on your list and your standards of what you will and will not tolerate and what he must have and what he has to bring to the table? Why? What happened? Because when you sit down and think about that, when you go over each um, item on your list, when you check off some of them boxes and you start thinking, okay, what made me put that on there? What was the search? What was the circumstance that made me say this? You'll identify if it even is relevant to you anymore. A lot of times it's not anymore because a lot of these start very early in our dating life. Okay. And then you'll also say to yourself, you'll be able to say, well, not necessarily six foot four, but at least to go to my previous example. So you'll go over them and you'll think the triggers of why. You'll assess if it's still a situation and you'll realize that those previous situations are hindering you from your future blessing and a potential good mate out there looking for you. And then two, you'll identify, okay, what's my range? What am I, why, you know, is this my hard sell or not? Is this my top? Like it cannot be, this is something I'm not going to compromise on because sometimes standards also will go here with it. Sometimes standards are based on you know, a place you are in life. Maybe you're a woman that's in politics and you really cannot play with a man who has a record, you know, or is currently acting up out here in the streets acting up and you can't, you know, take him to that event, that political event. You know, maybe you're in a situation where, you know, as a nurse or something like that, you know, or, or um, a professional who has a license that can't afford to jeopardize having a relationship with a man that could put you in a circumstance to lose your career. And lose your license, you know. So some of those, I mean, obviously would be hard sells for me, obviously, for obvious reasons. That's not what I'm talking about. So those things, yes, they would probably be some hard sells, them some top, you know, I'm not going to move and budge on that. OK, but I'm more like talking about two geared towards the heart. You'd be surprised if you take down some of those walls and realize why they were built brick by brick, why you have these. Um, it, you'll be surprised at what you'll open yourself up to, you know, that man that is buying you coffee every morning. When you go to the coffee shop before you go to work that you didn't look at before, he might, once you start assessing and bring your list from your subconscious to your clear conscious and focus, he might fit the bill when you sitting there writing it like, darn, you know, so-and-so who buys me coffee every morning, you know, because 
for we'll use that as an example. If he's if you're getting coffee and you you know he meets you in line and he, you know you don't know he might be that dude that's actually waiting in the car for you to pull up. He probably got there a little early to make sure he put you. You would be surprised who's waiting for you to just give him a second look, man. Just just if she just and standards will put a block on you to where some men who know they're a good man and they have a lot to offer you. They can kind of tell she ain't going to look at me because she's probably one of them that wants so and so and so and so that kind of dude. But he still is making himself available just, you know, in case, you know, it might be the guy that works in the mailroom. It might be your mailman. It might be the dude that works at the gas station. It might be the dude that lives across the street and he drives trucks for a living and he sees you going in your little cute suits and stuff to work every day. You know, you would be surprised. If who you will allow in and what your eyes will be open to, um, because I look at standards too. when I keep saying when I keep re referencing to them as these subconscious blockers and these scapegoats, you know, we'll take it away from there. Here's an example. You know how you have something in your house, you know, that um, that that has been sitting in that same spot. And, you know, you don't even think about it. You it subconsciously is there. And then when you go to find it, you can't find it because you you're so conscious about you, your subconscious. Just it's pushed it over there. You walk by it every day. And then when you go to look for it, it's like, Dawn, where is that? That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what I mean about, you know, these these subconscious um, standards that we put because you're so used to them. Being what they are that you don't even sit and realize, Dorn, why is that? Why am I like that? Why don't I like that? Why am I determined that he has to be so and so and so? I'll go here with it. Are you a woman who's blessed with height and you've dated some, you know, men who are not your exact height or a little bit taller than you and you've come across some issues? See, and sometimes you got to watch these friends of yours because did you get made fun of? Was your girlfriend saying, girl, what are you doing with that little man? You want to break that guy or you know, and you'd be surprised he could throw you around in a bit. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have to understand. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When you sit and look at these lists, you may come up with, I don't even know why. That's why. Why, do, why don't I like so and such and such and such? And oh, because that time I was out with a short dude, my girlfriends, you might identify stuff like that. And you have to stop allowing your friends in society out here to force you into loneliness because it will happen, honey. And a lot of these friends out here are living their lives and doing them and you're sitting there going home alone and wondering why. So you have to watch your circle too when you start going over these lists and you have to start standing firm. And you know what I've said in my very first video, you know, however it made, however it made you feel was how it was meant to make you feel. Stop doubting your emotions. Stop second guessing your emotions. Because when you start identifying things, you'll be surprised at the can that you open up like, wow, it doesn't even have anything to do with me. It's because when I was out with Gina and them, blah, da, 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 da. And you have to check these people in your life because at the end of the day, it's your life. When it's all said and done, you know, when you're going on trips and stuff and you're going down that aisle and you cuddled up to your boo at night and whatever, and they sitting home alone and you're not. I mean, you, you, you have to decide what you want and stand firm in what you want in your life. Um, you know, so give yourself that. Allow yourself that. Open yourself for other possibilities. And then you will just be surprised at, you know, the keys. And don't if something and, and when you open yourself. Make sure you're dating with purpose. And that's going to be my next video. And I touched on it a little bit in my previous video about believe, you know, what he said and does not what your heart wants to see and hear. And at the very end of that video, I touched on it a little bit and I was I got such a response about it that I'm definitely going to get into it in, in a whole nother absolute whole nother video dedicated to it. But when you're dating with purpose, once you start looking at your standards, that's why it's so key to date with purpose. And unlike most people, I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people say date with purpose, date with purpose. Why? What do you what is your what do you mean by that? I'm going to tell you what it means. But for the sake of this present situation, I'll go into that a little bit here, too. You know, once you go through your list and you decide and give yourself a range and take some stuff off and maybe put some new stuff on, you know, 
um, it will line you into focus about dating with purpose. And it will give you that go to, but make it a conscious list. After you've reassessed some things, make it a conscious list so that now when you're dating and you can identify some things, when it's some hard sells, you can just not waste your time and just move on. But be realistic and open in this path. And when you bring these things into focus, then it will, you know, you won't waste your time because once you start seeing things, it's like, okay, you know, but do it with a whole new set of eyes, not that subconscious. Well, he don't, you know, I'm not, I make so much money and I got my own house and whatnot. And, you know, if he can't meet me halfway, you know, you have to get over that. You have to stop that because you're going to be alone. And you're going to continue to have conversations with girlfriends like me and you'll be sitting there like, well, darn, you know, why can't I? Birthdays alone, Mother's Day is alone, Christmas alone, don't have nobody special, Valentine's Day, you know, and these holidays. That's why I'm doing this all about relationships and stuff on in, in November, because this is all about family time and everything. And are you bringing anybody home for, for Christmas this year and Thanksgiving this year again? Are you getting tired of hearing your mom and them? When are you going to bring me some grandkids? When are you going to settle down? When you, you know, I mean, you have to start, you know, somewhere. And a lot of it is you yourself. It's not that there's no good men out here. There's good men out here. Good for you. What's good for me and whoever else may not be good for you. Stop the stigma of there's no good men out here. Because I'm going to tell you like this. Some of these good men will put you through some stuff too, honey. <laughs> So you want to just close yourself off and, and, and say, okay, well, I just don't want to risk being hurt. Then you're just going to, then the, the, you're not living life, honey, because life is risks, risks and tries and get, fall down, get up and try again. That's what it's all about. This thing called life is something, honey. So just to bring it all the way around. Like I said, you're tight, you know, sorry for looking down. You know, I always take notes and stuff because I want to make sure that, you know, um, you know, once you and then once you to go back into it before I close it out. You would be surprised how when you take down some of these walls and you welcome Mr. Most of what I want in your life. You'd be surprised how your expectations will shift and everything he is will now become your standard. And if God forbid happens, something happens, you get married and the Lord takes him home. You, this will be the man you will base a lot of your standards on. It won't be like it was before. <laughs> so if anybody has any comments or questions about this, please feel free to leave um, comments down below and open this up. If you want to email me. Please feel free to email me at lenaspearls4 at gmail.com. This is honestly one of the things that um, spun this, um, this video and this, this content. Uh, also, feel free to like and share, please, if, with anybody that you know this might bless. But I do really want you guys to open up the conversation down below and, and help each other with this. Because remember, this is all about comfort, uplift, and empowering each other. Please um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. That information will be down below. Do not forget to like and do not forget to subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of every time I upload. We are trying to get this channel to a thousand subscribers. So with that, I just want to announce that I am going to be doing a phenomenal thousandth subscriber giveaway. So when we hit a thousand, that thousandth subscriber is going to get an awesome gift giveaway. And I'll be announcing what the giveaway is and other future videos. So. Thank you for spending your time with me. I do appreciate it. Until next time, take care and be blessed.